Welcome back. In today's video, we are covering one of my favorite protocols of 2024, Zeta Chain. And we're going to be covering the liquid staking protocols. We're going to be talking about DeFi within Zeta Chain. And is it worth it to stake your coins in the Zeta ecosystem? This is the CryptoVisor podcast. We talk about everything crypto, blockchain, and investing every single day of the year since 2018. So hit that subscribe button, turn on notifications, and do me a favor, give the video a free thumbs up. Zeta Chain, which is a brand new protocol that launched, uh, I think at the beginning of 2024, actually. Let's pull up the one-year chart to see. Uh, yeah, it, it launched basically in February of 2024 at about 80, 70, 80 cents, and now we're at about $1.26. But you can see that Zeta Chain had a huge run up. A lot of this was the launch of a lot of chains, and we were in the middle of this kind of pre having bull run. And so we've been covering Zeta Chain, and I'm getting a little bit more bullish on Zeta Chain as we go on because there's more activity on the network. Zeta Chain is effectively going to be an interoperability chain. Zeta Chain is a novel layer one that has chain agnostic interoperability built in between the EVM, Cosmos, inter-blockchain uh, ecosystem, Bitcoin, Dogecoin, Tron, etc. Developers can use Zeta Chain messaging capabilities to send data and native value without wrapping assets between any chain. Zeta will also support native smart contracts to let developers build omni-chain dApps, meaning multiple chain uh, interoperability cap capable apps that orchestrate funds across chains from a single contract. And so in today's video, we're going to kind of explore some of the metrics of this ecosystem. And now that we're kind of reapproaching these cycle lows or the all time record lows, remember, in my view, again, nothing I say on this channel is financial advice. These are my opinions, thoughts, strategies, and I could be wrong about anything and everything that I say. So you have to do your own research. But in my view, what we saw during 2020 was massive, massive, massive growth in new blockchains that promised to do a lot for the ecosystem of crypto, finance, etc. And not just did they promise, but they delivered, right? Because a lot of these new chains in 2020, they deployed with all the technology of chains from 2017 and 2018 that were trying to, you know, achieve this blockchain, you know, trilemma or whatever they call it. Meanwhile, Zeta Chain has now launched with interoperability to multiple blockchains and has staking already. You know, they're, they're already kind of integrating with other ecosystems and heavily within the Ethereum ecosystem. And so what did we see happen from all those coins in 2020 that launched in either late 2019 or early 2020, these saw massive, massive growth. They outperformed most of the uh, legacy blockchains that were already around. And so I think that we're gonna see that same type of thing this cycle. And there's really no incentive from the insiders to sell until we reach specifically new heights. And the, a lot of these coins are still locked up and they are on a vesting schedule, specifically in Zeta Chain. You could see only 12% of the overall supply is available. And while I, I typically don't like these tokenomics for long-term holds, I do think that this kind of tokenomic situation could be good in a bull market, even if they're releasing new coins into the ecosystem, which they are, they are. If we go to token unlocks, we can actually see the token unlock vesting schedule. So we can see that the previous event, they uh, released 5.29 million Zeta, the next one is 5.29 million Zeta. It looks like every month they're releasing about 5 million Zeta. This may increase as time goes on because keep in mind, right, there's a lot of Zeta that they have to release. I mean, 80, 80 something percent. So 5 million, it's a very small percentage. It's like 2% of the circulating supply. It's not a huge number, right? One, two percent inflation a year. It's not a huge number, but it could have sell pressure and it could create pressure that holds the coin down during the bull market. But what we're gonna be discussing right now is why I don't think that that necessarily is gonna be the case. And again, these are just my opinions. Accumulated Finance, which is a DeFi protocol, has now announced that 300,000 Zeta are now in their liquid staking ecosystem. So if we go to the DeFi page for Zeta Chain, you can see very small amount, $3 million is locked in DeFi. But again, this is a new blockchain. 
$322 million uh, total. So it's about 1% of the market cap is locked in DeFi. It's very small, but it has a huge potential to grow, right? And you can see that it's already grown from zero to 2 million in just a few months from when I'm recording this video, right? And so if we look at the largest um, DeFi protocols within Zeta Chain, we can see Eddy Finance, which is a DEX. They have 2 million locked. Zeta Earn, which is liquid staking, they have $1.19 million worth. Uh, IZK, IZI Swap, which is a swap platform, you can see how many different protocols you can actually swap into interoperability on their decks, uh, about half a million dollars. And then you see accumulated finance, $300,000, almost $400,000. And this is connected to six different chains, a lot of new chains, Velas, Manta, Zeta Chain, Arbitrum, BSC, and Zeta. And so there's one of the things that I love about Zeta Chain is how much interoperability it already has. It's already there, guys. It's already interoperable with multiple different chains. And once you can get to Ethereum and Arbitrum and Polygon, you can literally connect to any other blockchain. And so this is why interoperability is key, Cardano. This is why it's key. But today we're gonna to be talking about liquid staking, right? Accumulated finance is a liquid staking protocol. Effectively, liquid staking uh, is a way to stake in a protocol, but also get your coin. So for instance, they will create a, a synthetic coin or a, a liquid staking coin. So they may call it liquid staking Zeta uh, as an example. So you stake your Zeta in their protocol, you're gonna get those rewards from staking and you're gonna get a coin that is equivalent to one Zeta and that you're able to go and you know use in whatever else you wanna use, spending it or borrowing it or loaning it or whatever the situation is. And so let's understand a little bit more about Zeta Chain staking, because I didn't even know that much about their staking ecosystem to begin with. Again, newer protocol, they're still kind of getting their dashboards and linking to all of the APIs that basically track all of crypto. But it is on stakingrewards.com, and you can see that the Zeta Chain reward rate is approximately 5.86%, which is a pretty good number. Uh, this is kind of in the mid range of staking rewards. I would say anything under like 4%, I would consider on the low end, anything from four to like 10% is kind of in the mid range and anything over 10% would be considered high. Again, these are just how I kind of analyze the market. This may be different than your uh, viewpoint. But you can see here, that uh, there's been effectively a net inflow of staking over the last, uh, you know, one month, it looks like. Granted, there's been some outflow, but it looks like the overall inflow may actually outpace the outflow. Let's look at performance over time. Uh, let's pull this up since January um, or since February when the, the protocol launched. Let's see if this actually loads, and it does. And so, yeah, you can see the price has dropped uh, substantially from about $2, which we know a lot of hype. There wasn't a lot of coins in circulation. People didn't really know about it. Now that there's more coins being unlocked, this is also going to push the price down. Plus the macro picture is just kind of like a little bit of dip before the Bitcoin having cycle begins, right? But you can see that even though the price has been going down, staked Zeta has been going up. And staked Zeta altogether, there's about 700 million total staked Zeta. At about $1.23, that's almost a billion dollars of staked Ada. Let's just do the math on that. 680 million uh, coins. And we multiply that by one, I think it's like 125, 850 million. Yeah, 125. So basically, the staking ecosystem, according to staking rewards, has about $850 million worth of Zeta in it. And I think that's a pretty good number for a fairly new chain. Now, you may be saying, well, how, did, how is there this much Zeta staked when there's only 250 million Zeta in circulation? Well, that's where coins that may not be unlocked yet or vested may be staked. We saw the same thing in the previous cycle with Solana, where Solana's staked market cap was higher than their actual market cap. And so that's a big difference between 
unlocking coins versus vesting and unvested. Because from my understanding, unvested coins, you could still do things with, but you can't sell it. You can't remove it from your wallet or you may not have access to it. That's what I'm guessing it is. Obviously, I don't know the full answer to it, but you can see the total supply is 2.1 billion Zeta and the circulating supply is only 255 million, but there's 679 million dollars, or sorry, 679 million Zeta in the staking mechanism. But anyway, you can see Dora Factory has a 5.57% reward rate. Most of these are in the 5% reward rate um, in terms of where you're staking to. Now, if you look at the Zeta Hub validator base, what you can see here is that these show you the validators, how much voting power they have, meaning like how much Zeta are in each of these uh, different validators within the Zeta ecosystem. And you can see that their percent share of the overall staking network, how much commission they charge, what the uptime looks like, and you can click into them. So let's click into this one because this is the largest validator by voting power with 64 million Zeta or 8.7% of the active stake. And so in here, you can see the voting power. It shows you the commission, how much they take from the rewards, how much you need to have in it, and what their uptime is. And you can connect your wallet and delegate right from the Zeta Hub directly. Now, again, some people stake. Some people are just holding the coins to trade. Um, and some people are just holding it and they're going to want to like lock it into DeFi and earn rewards and yield from that. I mean, anything thing that you guys are going to do with your coins, as long as you understand the risks involved, I don't think there's anything wrong with different strategies. You can see the different pools for different um, pay, trading pairs, how much liquidity is in them, what the fee rewards are, all of that. So there is a lot going on in the Zeta chain ecosystem. Uh, there's still a lot of growth that needs to happen. Obviously, this is a very new ecosystem, very new blockchain. There's going to be probably more volatility here. It's still considered what I call a micro cap asset, right? Under $500 million in the crypto world is what I consider micro cap. Anything under hundred million market cap, I consider like a super mega micro cap. And these could potentially have more volatility, especially if they don't have as much volume, right? We see Zeta chain does have volume. It has about more than 10% of the market cap in volume in the last 24 hours when I'm recording this video. So there's definitely activity and liquidity, I would imagine. But this could change, obviously, at any time. But let me know what you guys think about Zeta Chain. Have you explored this ecosystem? Are you investing in it? Are you going to be staking? Let me know down below what you're doing. Don't forget to give the video a thumbs up while you're down there. Hit the subscribe button, turn on notifications, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Crypto on.